GM. Well, hello uh, and welcome to the speed run again. Um, we're going up the levels a little bit. We're now reaching the sort of high 1500 mark, so 1600. So the games are going to get a bit more intense. Uh, and looking at the comments, a lot of you have been asking me to play my favourite opening, which is the Dutch. So I'm going to play that here. Uh, and the idea of these videos is to talk you through, as I say, the typical mistakes that opponents around this rating range make uh, and just the way I'm thinking. Now, the opening is important. Um, you should also you should always know your first like 10 moves and the ideas behind that move. Uh, and the idea behind the Dutch at the start of the game is mainly to control uh, this square here. So that's the first thing to bear in mind. My opponent is now fighting for control of that with the pin and I can either break the pin or play this more aggressive move which again is has the aim of, of controlling this central square. Now I don't really want to swap there immediately because chess is often about a fight between ideas and uh, of course having opening knowledge is something you, you build up time and time again and my preferred way of meeting this standard idea is to just defend my bishop with the pawn and this does involve a little trick and the little trick here is after this move we can play a4 and, and these are just little tactics that I've learned over my period of time it looks like I'm losing a piece but now with knight c6 I'm actually trapping the queen and, and again these little opening traps are, are quite important obviously uh, they're things that you, you just pick up and uh, you know as you go along and obviously in our mind we remember things that really stand out to us and we're like oh yeah that's 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 uh, very clever and, and this idea stands out and the, and the other positional idea behind this is that we get hold of this square so the point is this queen is is going to be lost because we have rook a5 trapping it um, I'm just going to simply recapture with my queen here and um, there's no way this can go anywhere now I, I could also consider this one um, and then come in here which might be also very good but I, I quite like Queens and I'm just gonna put the rook here to demonstrate this idea um, just in case you get a chance to play it this a5 a4 it's, it's a very nice little trick that I've won many a game with my opponent will get a rook and a piece at eight points for the Queen so it's not completely over and maybe he's even gonna win this one but the Queen is is clearly stronger uh, and this is the kind of position where you know it, it's it's a long way from winning here it's about how, how do we win good positions well I could castle but I, I'm also thinking that I kind of want to get my Queen in the position so a, a move like c5 springs to mind I'll be a bit concerned about the knight coming into d6, but I think I can castle. And the idea with this move is I'm playing super aggressively uh, and I'm trying to open up my queen before my opponent can stabilize. Otherwise, I could play very normally and just develop my bishop. But I I'm going to try the c5 move. It looks quite interesting to me. Um, the other idea is that my knight comes into this square and it pressurizes the center. Um, and this is a standard idea this knight coming into this square so my opponents defended this idea um, I'm gonna I think put my knight in here anyway my opponent's playing actually very well here so you know he did obviously fall for that trick okay well this is a mistake I, I mean clearly my ideal is to attack this pawn and my opponent could have just brought his rook if he was aware of what I, my intentions were so he's a little bit not looking at my ideas that's the mistake that my opponents played here and he's played normal moves but he hasn't really been looking at my ideas enough and now that I take this one my position improves more because I've won a central pawn I've managed to get my queen into uh, the position as well and um, well I have a lot of tempting ideas here there's this check I can I think this one is, is very attractive because I ruined his pawn structure I've got to watch out for maybe this move um, but my queen is very strong I think I'm just gonna castle there might be other moves but simple is good and again I think throughout this speedrun series you, you can see that I, I've won quite a lot of games by not really doing anything that special um, but by using my experience that's if I win this game of course 
by using my experience and, and just by playing sort of standardish ideas. Now I'm going to go here because I don't want him to castle. So um, I'm, yeah, that, that's what I really want to do. Mini tactics and experience patterns that I've used in the past with a bit of basic opening knowledge. I want to get this bishop in the game. This is so the next thing I'm going to do is now get this bishop in the game. Again, I'm just playing simple moves. I want to get all my pieces working. I'm going to get my bishop pointing towards his king. The next thing I want to do, my queen and my bishop look quite good. So what do I do next? I want to bring my rook in the game. And where can the rook go? Well, in the Dutch, another very common idea is knowing these ideas, which is key, is to swing the rook around like this. Now, can I give up this pawn? A little bit of basic calculation here takes check put his king in the corner move the rook here and I'm threatening checkmate which he can't defend so this move is indeed um, if he captures that pawn that's this is where little tactics you have to be a bit aware you know my back rank is okay if he checks me my king can step out if he checks me again here so again I am using some basic calculation here but nothing too too taxing really and um, at the end of this game we will just have a look what what um, my opponent's common mistakes were and what I did at this rating range to 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 you know to win this game which I think now uh, I should well I'm pretty confident I'm going to win now because I've got three pieces attacking and this idea of just bringing a rook to one of these two squares is looking really strong there's a very nice tactical idea here as well if he goes here I can go check king here and I could finish with the beautiful queen takes e2, knight takes e2, bishop takes f3 checkmate. So I, I'm just getting carried away with variations. I mean, sometimes this is very, this is really important and over the board chess. Um, oh, I can't do this now because bishop f3, king here. Um, uh, I go rook check. He can block with a knight. But this move was always my my other idea, just threatening checkmate. I, I was going to say a very important thing to do, and this is especially in tournaments. I see a lot of people walking around in tournaments, in the physical tournaments, and it's it's really important, let's finish this off now, to, I, I don't generally uh, walk around. Um, what I do instead is I, I stay at the board as much as I can. I obviously go to the toilet when I need to, but generally what I do, let's play the Jabava London, I like that opening. Generally what I do is to think in my opponent's time. When my opponent's thinking, I'm thinking in advance of what he's going to do, what most likely moves are that I should be playing. I mean, this is just common sense. Don't relax. Chess is stressful in a beautiful way. Use that stress. Jabava London, first three moves, pawn here, knight here, bishop f4. So we don't really need to think about that. And again, it's knowing the basic opening ideas. And here, well, I'm going to go e3 because I want to bring my bishop out and my knight generally wants to head to this square here and again it's not even remembering the moves it's remembering the ideas my white knight is is pretty good in the center of the board here now against this move the old way of playing which i've recommended is f3 and g4 but for some very exciting news very shortly i'm going to be bringing out on ginger gm a chess a, my jabava london part two and what this is going to be, I, um, myself and mainly Blair, who's done a lot of work on the Jabbar of London, have really revamped the whole repertoire with the experience that we've gained and all the bits of information that people have asked us. We've revamped the repertoire and we're going we're gonna to create another version number two. So I'm very excited about that. And this is one of the ideas that Blair um, led me to, to play rather than the idea I give in my first Jabava DVD. So you've got to constantly be developing your, your systems, which was F3 and G4. And he, he thought that bringing the knight to this square was much better because you can play this G4 move straight away. And the point of this is um, the complications generally favor white, uh, as in um, if my opponent takes my knight, um, I think I can just take the bishop um one simple way of playing it i get the bishop pair and here there is also i'm just thinking pawn takes pawn basic calculation the knight can take this is the move that blair uh reminded me of i didn't actually look at the mistakes in that last game my opponent played hopefully we just got on with the next game because i got carried away but hopefully you got the point and this exchange is, is very beneficial to me because my opponent has to lose the tempo moving this knight again um, I'm most likely going to take here 
and he's going to have a weak pawn on this square, which one thing I could do is attack it. But now that my opponent's knight's moved here, we're always constantly adapting our plans. I'm going to develop my undeveloped piece and exchange off that knight because that knight was looking quite active. And here I'm going to take here and we can see that my opponent has these two weakened pawns. I don't really have any weakness. I'm not going to castle kingside because my king's a bit weak there. So I need to move my queen to castle this way. Where did my queen go? I can either aim for this one, but then that invites b5. And I don't really want to be inviting a pawn storm when my king's over there. I mean, I might castle kingside. It's not that bad. But I actually prefer moving my queen here because this is like one of those moves which is a bit superficial, moving my queen here. Because yes, it creates a threat, but it, it tempts my opponent to play the best move, which is pawn there. Why why tempt my opponent to do that? Good move from my opponent. And now now I think actually castling queenside is going to be quite risky because my king opens up. So I am going to castle kingside. My king can go here, and I've got a lot of pieces around to defend my king. My rook can gain the open G file. So I think I'm I'm pretty safe here. And if my opponent does not take my knight now, I would have moved my knight. My opponent playing very well, I have to admit. And he's castled. Uh, and this position, he's done. I think he's done a very good job. And he might even be now coming here. So what do I do? Do I start attacking this pawn? Um, or do we prepare this idea um, and try to go for g7? I quite like this oh no because then the knight comes and attacks my queen so i have to move my queen first to get out of the way of this if i i don't want to allow his knight into this square really so this seems the most logical one and i'm now fine i'm now thinking of what target i should be attacking in my opponent's position my opponent playing very well here and this is the the target now i i'm gonna stop the exchange of queens and I'm also in the same time taking control of this square, which he could have used with his knight. And, and I'm also preparing to advance in the center with this move. So uh, this f3 move seems to do a good job. I want to keep the queens on. Exchanging the queens would improve his pawn structure. Um, so that's one reason. But I also want to apply pressure to g7. And the reason I want to do that is because my bishop seems to sit very nicely here. Um, when it sits on this square, uh, he's going to struggle to defend g7. It looks like he's got connection problems. Let's hope he comes back. Uh, in He's got 16 seconds. It's always annoying when they disconnect. Okay, he has come back. Good, good. And another good move from my opponent. He, he's stopping this bishop coming in. Uh, he's playing very well at the moment. And he might even want to break with this move. So, uh, nice, nice play. Now, I could go uh, pawn up. And I think I will play this move while I've got a chance. Attack the queen and build up my center. And my bishop is now on pre. I'm going to move it here now because if I go to that square, I'd, I'd get captured. And um, my opponent might even consider swinging the rook. So actually, I mean, I have to say, very good play from my opponent. And he's also, okay, can't get a rook here because my bishop stops that. I need to get my king out of the way. A real fight on our hands here. And he moved the rook there while well, he's blundered. And, and this is often the case. I mean, it's not the end of the world for my opponent. I'm going to go here because I don't want him getting a knight here. I'm moving quicker because I can see this guy is good. And I want to keep my record up. He's attacking this pawn. Now, I could push it forward straight away. But I want to cover that one first. This is still going to be a threat if he hits my pawn with his queen. I'm going to push it forwards, but the reason, okay, now where's he going with the queen? He's attacking this one, another good move from my opponent. I don't want to lose the central pawn, so I'm going to have to give up the c2 pawn. And now, surely I need to break in the center. Now this one takes, takes, rook takes. Is there some back rank thing he has to worry about? Um, I'm not sure. The other way I can do it is try to divert that knight away first. Let's go here. Um, maybe f5 was working. Uh, I, 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 it feels right to open up lines in my rook uh, with such a move, but I couldn't see the killer blow after rook takes f5. And again, I'm kind of showing that my, my calculation, I'm not really calculating deeply in these speed run things. When you get to a high level, calculation becomes more and more important. 
Uh, and that's something you can train yourself up on. It's like just practice your tactics. I wouldn't practice it under the time constraint, personally. Um, okay, so now I am certainly going to move this pawn because he's not controlling this square with his queen anymore. So I want to open up for my rooks to, to, to come into the position and I want to force his knight away. His queen is quite annoying floating around here. Okay, so he's come in and he's got this one. I missed this move. He's a tricky little guy, isn't he? But it should be all right because my rooks are very active. So if he comes over here, I've got this back rank checkmate and this is my big threat at the moment and he's missed it. He's just missed this checkmate. That was a tough game. Maybe the difference there between us was our, um, the computer says you were never in trouble, but I felt a bit of pressure there. Well played to my opponent. Let's just have a look. So first of all, ha what did my opponent do wrong? Well, I, I think I got, well, I did get a nice position from the opening. So I showed a little bit of better opening knowledge about what plans to play. And I played this new idea of moving the knight to e5. Now, this is improving on the old Jabava London idea, which I give in my Jabava London original course with f3 and g4. Um, this uh, idea of moving the knight in is a much, I think, trickier way for black to face. And the next thing is he wasn't prepared for g4. And the idea is if the bishop goes back here, h4 becomes really tricky for him to keep this alive because h5 is threatening to win it. So I showed a little bit of better opening knowledge and that gave me this position, which is certainly better for me here. My opponent ended up playing very well and I'm actually now rethinking, I'm, I'm rethinking whether this was correct because his bishop b4 was a nice move. Maybe I should have played the prophylactic move a3 and then gone on with my plan. But it continued, I think, fairly sensibly. My opponent playing, I think, pretty good moves here. And he, this was this was a really high level move. This was a move we wouldn't have seen in our previous speed run videos at all. This shows high class for my opponent. Why? Because my opponent is thinking about what I'm going to do next. And I kept going on about bringing my bishop here. And my opponent stops that idea. And this is the kind of move I think you'll find is the difference between, you know, if you're under 1600 and if you're over the 1600 level. This is the kind of preemptive move which shows class. So bear that in mind. Okay, let's get on. Let's get into another game. I think that's enough of that. And he started to blunder a little bit later on. His tactical vision was a little bit off later on. 